it's a glorious late August morning and I'm just outside the village of Eakin on one of the high points in the Eakin area point called Red Hill. This is a spot that I used to use on many occasions to record the visible passage and migration of migratory birds in spring but most often in autumn when passage is greater. Today it's not birds, it's butterflies and it's often a similar thing, the autumn migration of butterflies is stronger and higher than it is in the spring, although occasionally you can get some clouting days and some massive movements of butterflies in spring. Now such movements are usually undertaken by two species in particular and they are our regular migrants, Red Admiral and Painted Lady and it's both those species that I'm looking out for this morning. I've come out here because the conditions are so good and we're getting close to September which is the typical peak time for migratory butterflies but we'll see there might not be anything moving through at all in that case it's just going to be a lovely day to be standing about doing nothing So, just what does all this malarkey involve then, this butterfly migration? Which is quite interesting really, because there's still a lot of people out there that don't even believe or have any idea that it occurs, and it occurs annually. Of course, in the spring there can be some massive movements, especially of Painted Lady, that's usually the, the big spring species every sort of... 10 15 years or so there's a massive northerly movement throughout europe right away from africa throughout europe and reaching the uk spectacular days ensue when that's going on water migration tends to be difficult to see sometimes or at least difficult to know when it's reaching its peak but in order to record the mi visible migration of butterflies, it's just a simple process. You just need some decent binoculars or good eyes. You need a decent vantage point as well, but it doesn't have to be high up like here. I've always used this higher elevated point of Egrid because I found that butterfly migration is higher up here than it is lower down in Equine Flash and between Equine Flash and Lound Wood, that area there. There's always more up here. But whatever you need, you need an open vista. I've got a good view of about 200 yards over to the camera's left. And similarly downhill here, about the same amount to the camera's right. Uh, this slopes down, so I tend to stand up. That way I'm looking along the level of the ground. Now, most butterflies of Red Admiral's painted ladies, clouded yellows and large wires will fly between about a foot off the ground and about four feet off the ground. If you're low to the ground level, it makes them easier to spot against the background sky or whatever background you've got. And if you've got a site that has a hedge or some kind of border running north to south, that's often a good thing to have because butterflies will use those kind of roots to fly alongside or in the leaves of today potentially is an excellent day because we've got a light northeasterly breeze it's really nice actually because it's very warm today already it's just a case then standing scanning with binoculars looking with the eyes give it an hour if nothing's gone through or very little you can pack up and go and do something else You've not sort of lost a great chunk out of your life. If you've seen one or two butterflies moving through there in that first hour, typically from sort of at 10 o'clock onwards, then often it can be worth sticking around. Now, I've been here about 20 minutes, and the species that's moving through, actually, is large white. I've had four go through. Large white is one of those species 
that people would say, well, they're just local butterflies, but they're not. The flight of migratory butterflies is direct and quite swift. That's something you learn with experience. So we'll see if anything else comes through. Well, I've been stood up at the top there for the best part of 45 minutes and bottom few large white that went through nothing appears to be going through now there is a painted lady knocking around here because I've just moved down now to this uh, north facing area of meadowland and there's quite a lot of flowers here I'm just having a look to see if anything is just pausing to nectar at these flowers but it appears very quiet I'm quite surprised actually I would have thought some things would have gone through but there's a number of whites good numbers of small whites and green veined whites at the moment pretty much all the sites have been to but in terms of visible migration of butterflies today there's nothing happening So I think the course of action is to sit here for a bit longer yet because it's just extremely pleasant. It's amazing how many buzzards there are in the Ekron area and well throughout Nottinghamshire now so many it's the commonest raptor far easier to see buzzard than it is sparrow hawk or kestrel how times have changed but i've just had 20 minutes conversation with jim who farms 250 acres in the eco area including where i am now it's nice to know that he's still able to grind out a living despite everything the increase in costs and the plans that they have this year is for a lot of the land to be fallow but this is a very wildlife friendly farming concern much more wildlife friendly than i thought and on all the videos on this channel i mentioned how wildlife friendly they are and i've in particular i've mentioned an area set aside at Lound Wood and that is permanent set aside it's been there over 10 years now apparently but they have two other areas like that it's tremendous what they're doing but there's no oil seed rape Jim's not growing any oil seed rape because there's no money in it at the moment not unless you can sort of grow it efficiently and productively and there are sort of a variety of methods one larger farming concern apparently is very good at it but to Jim it's not worth doing it but it's nice that a lot of his land this year is going to be fallow and then for the next two years it'll be wheat but there's an indication of how wildlife friendly they are. The hedgerows are only cut sort of once every two or three years. I can remember this one being planted not that many years ago and it's made a cracking hedge. You can still be wildlife friendly and earn a living in farming but that's something that you rarely hear anything about. They never interview farmers on breakfast television in the morning and the farmer saying, I've made too much money last year, I don't know what to do with it. Everything is always doom and gloom. When really that's not the entire picture that we're fed and given. One of the problems with oilseed rape production for a small farm is, say, it's the productivity. And of course, you never know from year to year 
how it's going to grow. You need to have a crystal ball with farming, really, because you have to plan, and it's a complete risk a year in advance for you to know what to grow. But there again, you're at the mercy of the weather. But there's still large infestations of beetles that affect oilseed rape. And the last time that they grew oilseed rape a number of years ago, they had a massive infestation and ended up losing money producing the crop. That's what you don't want. So they've never bothered with it since. But it is something that they might look at, but they would have to modify the machinery. And there again, there are a number of sprays that you do have to spray on oilseed rape for the rape flea beetle. don't like the use of pesticides, but fortunately it is still allowed, but at least the nicotinoidal sprays seem to have stopped, at least for Jim. And Jim at the moment is working his way around these fields the strip at the base of the hedgerows it's the first time it's been done for years but the hedgerows will, are due to be cut this year and here working away down at the bottom but as part of the stewardship set aside scheme there's six metre strips running throughout the length of most of Jim's fields at least against deeper in here and two metres well, that set aside strip is cut once or twice a year and that's purely because it is used by the public the other three or four meters that's left is never cut or extremely rarely cut them and is left entirely for wildlife it's a great scheme and this is a cracking bit of meadowland and there's no plans for it ever to go and be used for something else thankfully its method of cutting remains the same cutting three parts and that's done every year and then grazed by sheep for a period of time over the winter months nice to see a field like this that is cut in the traditional manner apparently it can't be cut till after July the 15th and that by all accounts is every year now happening and it's as far as I'm aware it can be any date after July the 15th There's a lot of silly rules in farming, from what I can gather. But at least all this is still here. That's the good thing. Long may it remain here. <laughs> 